Friends, all righty. Let's get this uh, stove burning right here. Shall we? I think we shall. I'm downtown Kingsport, Tennessee right here <clears throat> beside the public library. Let's start this stove up. The other night, I couldn't get the uh, instant, when I did the review on this uh, Ozark Trail 4-in-1 stove, I couldn't get the uh, instant burner, instant igniter to light it, but it will work now. I guess it was wet somehow because it was damp outside. Let's see if it'll work now. There we go. The instant lighter works on it. Maybe it had to break in after a couple more clicks. So there we go, we got a flame. I'm going to boil me some, that's too high. I'm going to boil me some water. Make sure my stove is on here tight. These things are all the way around. There we go. And I've got about 16 ounces of water. And I'm going to use this right here. I'm going to use Chaser's Choice House Blend. I will turn the camera around on my pretty face. Hey, John. Let me turn the camera around so everybody can see me because I'm looking at the back of my phone. Yeah, I've got some coffee going right here, buddy, with my 4-in-1 camp stove. It works perfect. Other night, the... Guess what? Other night, the uh, igniter would not work. Let me uh, let this tripod out. Let me shake your body around for a minute. Take my tripod out all the way. So we can get everything in focus. Back her up just a little. The other night, the instant igniter on here would not work correctly. And the problem was, I guess it was damp because it had been raining outside. It works perfect. Push that button, it fired right up. So turn it up a little bit. And it will heat coffee up in three minutes. Well, I just boiled two cups of coffee for my friend Paul who works at the library. He works for Kingsport City, the city of Kingsport. He does a cleans the library at night. He came out here. I heated up 20 ounces of water in three and a half minutes with this stove. There we go, got it on high. Listen at it. That's hot, buddy. And I hope everyone ha is having a fabulous Friday night because you know your boy the big O is, like always, keeping it real like a big ball of wheel or whatnot. Let me back the camera up a little bit because I don't have it put up all the way. There we go. Get Because I'm tall. I'm five foot six, so. Take my glasses off. This is super bright lights. Where am I at? I'm at the uh, park right beside the library, the Br Bruce Glenn Park, and I'm in the gazebo, and they got a bunch of bright lights in here. The lights goes off about 1.24 a.m. in the morning. I slept late yesterday, so I'm energetic. I'm out just having a blast. Heating me up some late night coffee water. She's already boiling. I like mine really hot, so I'm gonna let it boil just a little bit longer. So in three minutes, I boiled 20 ounces of water. This thing to me is just as good is a pocket rocket stove that all the campers are always bragging about. They cost 60 to 80 dollars. This is 12 dollars. This is a propane adapter that comes with it. So this by itself costs 10 dollars. So, <clears throat> and most of the camp stoves do not have this, or the high, back, backpacking hiking stoves do not have this. This is 10 dollars by itself. So you get the burner, the stove, plus the adapter for 12 dollars. You can't beat that with a stick. I guess I'm getting a good live stream. It looks, I had a full signal before I started. Everything's looking good. I'm looking good, freshly shaved. Three minutes, look at here. It's hot. Can you tell? Can you see the steam? Look at that blue flame. Hear that? Look at the steam. It's bubbling, so I guess I need to take it off. See the steam? You can heat water up in three minutes with this. Two cups of water. That's two cups of water. You can you can heat one cup of water up, which is eight ounces, 
in one minute and 30, one minute and 20, 25, 30 seconds. So this is about 16 ounces of water and I heated it up in three minutes. Look at the steam coming off of it. I love this Ozark Trail 4-in-1 camp stove. It's, Ozark, it's called the Ozark Trail 4-in-1 stove with stand. I don't use a stand. Who, why would you need a stand? This is pretty much flat on the bottom. This butane uh, canister. So now, let me put a pack of coffee in my cup right here. Here's my cup, eight ounces. Hope everyone's having a fabulous Friday night. I see two people's watching. I appreciate it. I love all my viewers. I love all my subscribers. I consider y'all my friends. If you're out and about in Kingsport, come down here and see me. As long as you ain't no trolls. Taster, what am I drinking? Taster's Choice. Thank you, Sonia. Sonia McGore fan got, a, got these for like 25 cents a pack. 25 cents a pack. You get six packs in here, you get six eight ounce packs. In other words, one pack is good for one cu cup of coffee, which is eight ounces. Comprehend? 25 cents a box on you, I think. It, she bought like 20 or 30 packs of box. She bought like 20 boxes of these, I think for like $2. So it, you do the math. And this is the Taster's Choice House blend. I've already drank uh, one before. I give it a seven. It's one of the best instant coffees there is. This and Folgers. Uh, folders and this but my, my favorite one is another one i had to do a review on it my favorite instant <clears throat> and i could have i ground my own coffee i could have brought my own coffee and did it and heat, heated my water and did a pour over method you know where you pour it through a plastic filter with the screen in it you put it just but i didn't do it so in other words i could drink fresh ground coffee by using this same method right here using my pour over filter so let's tear the top off of this, shall we? I think we shall. Am I tearing the wrong end here? Or am I just weak in my old age? There we go. All right. That water's a smoking, and Big O ain't joking. I love this stove. $12. You can use it. <clears throat> you can use this on propane or butane bottles. Comprehende? It's a dual stove. In other words, dual purpose: butane or propane. Fill her up. <sighs> I like my coffee hot, like I like my women. Is it? If this coffee ain't smoking, Big O ain't joking. It's smoking. Put the hot water back here. It speaks for itself, that stove. Look here. Three and a half minutes, two cups of water, 16 ounces. It ain't no joke. Take my Ozark Trail spoon I've had since 2008 when I had my uh, Chevy Astro motor home. We would stir the coffee up. Oh man, that's good. <clears throat> now that coffee's hot. This coffee's a smoking and big O ain't joking. So how's everyone doing tonight? Say something in the live chat. The live chat should be turned on. If you want to talk to your boy to big O, now's the time to do it. People I have I'm fifty three years old, but I got the energy of two of two. Guess what? of two 27 year old people 53 be 54 october i've got the energy of two 27 year old people i'm energetic focused dynamic persuasive articulate big mouth in the south i don't see nobody chatting i see one person watching uh let me give everybody a little view of the gazebo the gazebo come on camera flip around it's got bright lights they turn them off about 1 24 a.m
as my murky mountaineer. I was talking to my friend Paul. He works at the library. He works for the city of Kingsport. He cleans up at night. Uh, I'm an eighth of a mile, John, from a church circle. I can throw a baseball and hit church circle. I'm right here off of <clears throat> Broad Street. Broad Street is right out here. Church Circle is an eighth of a mile that way. Two, it's one block that way. Actually, not one block, John. Church Circle is a half a block. Um, I don't know, 300 yards. Let me see. I'd say I'm probably 350 feet from Church Circle, maybe 400 feet. And that used to be my that used to be Regents Bank, that big building. They sold it to the city of Kingsport. John, right there is Church Circle, my friend. Right here. See that church? All that back there is Church Circle. So, yeah, that's Church Circle. See right there? That is Church Circle. There's four churches there. There's one there. This is the hometown bank. Kingsport uh, Bank, hometown bank. And right here is my setup. I've got my little Ozark Trail cheer. I've got my stove. I've got everything I need in that little container. I use those things right there. I put them in the back of my SUV, John. And it keeps my groceries and my hiking gear and my camping gear from rolling around. These plastic carts, little, kind of like little something milk carts, basically. So I'm having a, a good time. Let me see, I might turn it this way. Yeah, that church back there is church circle. <clears throat> turn it this way a little bit, I think. I kind of like that backdrop right there. And these uh, office buildings to me looks like German style buildings like Helen, Georgia. That's pretty neat. So like I said, I hope everyone's had a wonderful day. I'm gonna put, put it up a little bit higher. Oh heck yeah, it'd be a cool place to stealth the camp, John. Put it down a little bit, I'm short. I'm five foot six. Actually, let me turn the camera around on me this way. Because I'm looking at the back of my phone, so I've got to flip the screen around. Yeah, that right out here is Broad Street. Right here is the Kingsport Public Library. Get the camera flip around here. Come on, screen. There we go. Here we go. Had to push it like four times. What's up with this live stream? That water's still smoking. Look at here. You tell me that ain't a good stove, uh, John. Look at there. Coffee's still smoking. Big O ain't joking. So how's your night been, John? What'd you do, buddy? What'd you do? It's, uh, I guess, technically, technically Saturday night. What is it? About 12.20 p.m., 12.25, maybe 12.30 uh, technically Saturday, Saturday morning. So what you, how'd your Friday go? I had a good Friday. I woke up. I was happy. I was positive. I was focused. I was dynamic, persuasive, articulate, charismatic, influential, omnipotent. You got to have a sense of humor, people in life. You got to have a sense of humor, people in life. All you need is two things, three things. You need God, a sense of humor, and confidence in yourself. Those three things. God, a sense of humor, and confidence in yourself. Remember that, three things. Just crashed after work, life out loud. It's been a crazy, hectic week. I heard that, my friend. Things happen sometimes that we can't control, but we have to keep a, we have to keep a sound mind. You can't let things rattle you. I have been known to get rattled, but you know, you have to be, I guess you have to try to take everything with a grain of salt, and sometimes that can be hard. Sometimes that can be hard to do. It can be hard to take things with a grain of salt. But at the end of the day, guess what? It's all small potatoes. It's all small potatoes. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what happen happens as long as we're still alive, as long as we still got a sound mind, a strong heart, faith in our God and God, and got to have confidence in yourself. You gotta believe in yourself. I don't care if nobody else believes in you, you gotta believe in yourself. 
Got to be strong. It's important. It's more important to be strong mentally and spiritually, mentally and spiritually than it is physically. And I've been hitting the gym the last two weeks. Grundy, no, I was thinking about going to Grundy, and I still I was thinking about you when I was. I went to uh, Virginia yesterday. I went to uh, Jonesville, Virginia. I went to Cumberland Gap, Virginia, and then I went to Cumberland, Kentucky. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, I went to Jonesville, Virginia, uh, yes, uh, Thursday night, Thursday evening. I went to Jonesville, Virginia. I mean Friday night, uh, uh, Thursday night. Yeah, I went to Jonesville, Virginia, Thursday night, Thursday evening, and then I left there. I went to uh, uh, Cumberland Gap, Virginia. Then I left Cumberland Gap, Virginia, and I drove over into Harlan County, Kentucky, Cumberland, Cumberland, Kentucky. And if y'all ever wonder sometimes how I want to get tongue tied, you know why? Watch this. All these are my real teeth, but my back teeth had to get pulled. These are my back teeth, and it's got a metal stainless steel. It's stainless steel, and it feels like I've got braces on. And see, I got these and these. These are all mine. These are my back teeth. It cost $1,200. Stainless steel, and the metal goes right down here on my bottom gum, and it feels like I've got braces on, people. It makes me stumble over my words but they help me eat. Other than that, I take and throw them in the trash can. If I didn't have to wear these when I eat, because I don't have no back teeth, I had to have them pulled, I would throw these in the trash. But that costs $1,200, and I better think twice before I throw that in the trash. It's hard to believe that this cost $1,200, but it did. Sure, stainless steel, it's made out of, it's supposed to be the best porcelain or whatever it's made out of. I don't know, $1,200, that seems kind of high to me, but oh well. I guess you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. So I'm taking them out. Can you tell I can talk better without them? Sometimes it makes me stumble over my words. They slide right in, clip onto my teeth. Feels like I got braces on. See there? But it's all good in the neighborhood. I'm drinking coffee. I'm simulating my overabundant artistic God-given neurons by sipping on hot steaming coffee, thanks to my Ozark Trail 4-in-1 stove. It says, message John, it says, John Keller, message retracted. Why would you retract your message? <clears throat> I hope I'm seeing all the messages. Sometimes, you know, I do, I do not see them. And so most time I see most of the messages when people post messages you know, the live chats while this is live streaming. I guess I got a good signal. Uh, showed I had full signal on my phone before I started. And uh, the library at night, I think they cut their internet off. I think about, I think they cut it off when the library closes. And you can't blame them, because guess what? When they used to have their li uh, internet on 24 hours a day, all the homeless people would just be out front at night just everywhere, all in this gazebo, using the free Wi-Fi. So I bet you money, that's why they started turning turning the internet off when the library closes. <clears throat> and one thing I would like to discuss while I'm on topic, talking about homeless people, Kingsport passed a new law. They passed two laws. It's a misdemeanor if a homeless person in, in Tennessee, not, not just Kingsport, it's two Tennessee laws Tennessee passed recently. It's a misdemeanor it's for somebody to be homeless and be on a public street or a public roadway now. It's a misdemeanor. So they have criminalized homelessness. I think that's wrong. They have criminalized homelessness. If you don't believe me, check Google it. And they also passed a law. If they're in a city park like this or a state park, it's a felony. I think that is crazy. You, hey, free Wi-Fi is good, but I cannot believe that Tennessee passed two laws criminalizing homelessness. It's a misdemeanor if people are out on the public streets or roadway or sidewalk laudering, in other words, living outside. It's, it's a misdemeanor. But if they are in a city park or a state park now, any park in Tennessee, it, and they tell them to move on and they don't move on, they charge them with a felony now. 
I doubt they will seriously enforce that because I think that's a bunch of crocker. Uh, S-H-I-T, you know what I'm saying? Criminalizing homelessness is against, criminalizing homelessness is against humanity. So if somebody's lose their job and had to live on the street, even if you're in your vehicle, I guess, you know, if you're on the street now in Tennessee and you're living on a public roadway and you've living in, a, in your car on a public roadway or in a residential neighborhood, just park on the side of the road against the curb, it's a misdemeanor. But if you are in a park in Tennessee now and you're living in the park, city or state, whatever, they can charge you with a felony. I think that's wrong because it makes, it makes it harder for homeless people to get ahead. You gotta have somewhere to sleep. If I was homeless, I would sleep where I had to sleep. That's the bottom line. But I would try to be, I'd try to keep, a, if I was homeless, I would try to keep a low profile, be unseen, hardly noticed. You know what I'm saying? I'd get me a tent, put it up in the woods, have a sleeping bag. I would stay out of sight and away from everybody else, all the other homeless people, because they steal each other's stuff. I know that for a fact because I talked to a bunch of them before. <clears throat> they get their stuff stole by the other, other homeless person. I, that's crazy, John. If you don't believe me, buddy, Google it. Misdemeanor, if me and you are homeless on the street or on a public roadway, a public sidewalk, it's a felony. If we are in a city or a state park or a federal park in Tennessee, they can charge you with a felony. That is absolutely crazy. To criminalize homelessness is crazy. And when I'm out late at night like this, I always got some kind of protection. I carry police issued pepper gel saber and I always leave it on loaded. All I have to do is push it down. That is off right here. When I click it to the left, when I click it to the right, that is on. It will spray 15 feet, it's gel. It will not blow back in your face. So. <clears throat> I've been, I've been out blogging before, late in the evening and stuff. Or I ain't really, ha I've never had it hap happen at night, but late in the evening, like, I don't know, six or seven, eight o'clock, seven, eight o'clock, I've, I've ran into, I've only really had two problems blogging on the street. One, two, three problems. In six, six, I've been blogging for over six years now on YouTube, and I've only encountered three people, crazy people, that come up harassing me. So that's why I started carrying this. Do you blame me? I mean, I got big arms. I could take care of myself. Trust me. Look at there. I could take care of myself. But why fight somebody who is harassing you or getting in your space, threatening you, when you can instantly stop them? I use my brain. I'm not insane. I can rap. I can rhyme. They call me the big O. But I am always alert. If you see me blogging sometimes, and I can be blogging in the daytime, I can be doing a food review, I can be doing an item review, and, and some people are, big old, why are you looking around? You should be looking into the camera. Because if I'm blogging, I'm staring at the camera, I can't see what's going on around me. I'm always looking, you know. I wanna be, this is 2022. You're really not, you're not really that safe anymore out in public, trust me. So I am always vigilant, I'm an analytical person. I always think ahead. It's better to have something like this and not need it than to need it and not have it. Would you agree? So pepper gel, saber, police issued, squirts 15 feet, will not blow back on you. Pepper spray will blow back in your face if the wind is blowing towards you. Pepper gel will not. <clears throat> now you know the rest of the story. And no, I'm not Paul Harvey. Y'all, anybody used to watch Paul Harvey? I grew up listening to Paul Harvey when I, when I lived in Georgia 38 and a half years. And at the end of every one of his, you might as well say blog, his little radio uh, commentary, his, his radio commentary all the time, he was talking on the radio, Paul Harvey. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> he had his own little radio uh, show, but once a day, I think. I think it was around lunch somewhere in there, I think it was lunchtime. And at the end of all his uh, little blogs, might as well say blog, uh, he would say, good day. He'd say, uh, this is Paul Harvey. Good day, close the show out. And he always had great stories to tell. Did anybody that is watching this used to listen to Paul Harvey? He was good.
And then his son, if I'm not mistaken, he did a his, his show too for a while. I don't think he's doing it any longer. If I, yeah, but I think his son did do it a while too, Paul Harvey Jr. But I used to love to listen to his stu uh, show. It was very educational. He would tell you about different new items, and he had, he would always uh, had great stories to tell. In, a lot of inspirational stories to tell, you know, to influence people, to make them, pump them up, make them inspired. And I hope I'm inspiring you tonight by just looking into this phone and being happy, being positive, upbeat, focused. If you're going to be anything, people, you might as well be happy. You only live one time on earth, then you die and you go to hell or heaven. I'm going to heaven. I know where my faith is. Yep, because hey, you don't ever know when you're gonna need something. I, you know, I was at, I, one day I put up in Walmart parking lot and I had my GoPro camera. My, it was my GoPro Hero 7 Black. Uh, two year, about two years ago, I had a GoPro Hero 7 Black on the dash of my Mercury Mountaineer, which is right here. Some idiot pulls up behind me, starts taking photos of my tag, wanting to know what am I doing with a camera on the dash of my tr car, my SUV. First of all, it wasn't none of his business. I said, well, I'm a YouTube vlogger. He said, what else all I need to know? This idiot was taking photos of my tags. I sh you know, I, I should have called the police and got them harassment. I just kind of laughed at him, you know? When you got 22-inch arms, they ain't much to nobody a threat to you, trust me. Unless they got a gun. There's always somebody's really a threat to me if they've got a knife or a gun. Because I'm strong. I ain't trying to brag, but I am strong. I can handle myself. One-on-one, -on -one, most people can't whoop me in the fight, trust me. So, but when you get, if you always use your brain though, I would rather use this on somebody than have to sit there and fight them for two or three minutes. That will stop a threat instantly. Pepper gel, Sabre. You can buy this $12 at Walmart and they got a bigger can, bigger than this. I think squirts, it's probably about a half a pint. It will squirt like 30 feet in this pepper gel. So it's better, you always get, you got to, Donnie, <clears throat> you cannot depend on the police because I have called the police in Kingsport before when something illegal was going on or two times when somebody who was, was harassing me when I was blogging, they show up like an hour later, for real. They show up like an hour later. So if somebody's targeting, target, targeting, targeting you and they're being a threat to you, by the time something happens, and by the time they show up, your ass is just up S-H-I-T creek, if you know what I mean. So I depend on me to protect me, you know. I carry something a little bit stronger than pepper gel, but I ain't gonna discuss it on here, you know what I'm saying? If pepper gel don't work, I got something that will work, trust me. <clears throat> you gotta take care of your own self. You gotta be responsible for your own safety. No matter where you are, I don't care if you're hiking on the trail, Appalachian Trail, the Pacific Crest Trail from Mexico to Canada. I don't care if you're walking and blogging on a city street, a city sidewalk, whatever. City park, state park. It's 2022. You can't trust people no more. I say, I ain't going to say everybody, but I'd say 50% of the people you cannot trust anymore. People don't have no morals. They don't have no respect for themselves or you. You gotta be vigilant, always looking around you, being analytical. <clears throat> yeah, there, I met, I met this Paul, I mean John. I was talking to my friend Paul earlier, but uh, I met this one guy on Appalachian Trail in Hot Springs, North Carolina, and I had been camping there for about three days. He showed up on Appalachian Trail in Hot Springs, North Carolina, Madison County, and he was normal. He was normal, and three days later, he was, I mean, he was as normal as normal can be, right? Well, three days later, this guy lived in Asheville. He owned his own restaurant. Three days later, he was, he decided he was going to be my buddy and camp. And he was a good, you know, decent looking guy. You know what I'm saying? Kind of looked like Sylvester Stallone, you know, that kind of person. Had brand new clothes on, had a brand new car, and he was you know, brand new laptop. I mean, this dude had money. You know what I'm saying? He owned the restaurant. He showed me pictures in Asheville. Three days later, he, he woke up and he was talking completely out of his mind. And like, you know, just like he was schizophrenic. He went from being normal to totally crazy. So I said, you know, I'm just gonna try to get away from this guy. So I get my Chevy Astro motor home. 
87 Chevy Astro Motorhome, and I decided I was going to get away from this guy and go from, uh, from Hot Springs, North Carolina. <clears throat> I was at Mill Ridge, and then I decided I was going to go to Rich Mountain Lookout Tower, which is still in Hot Springs, right? But the, the, the Appalachian Trail spritz, runs right beside the Rich Mountain Fire, Fire Lookout Tower. And so I decided I was going to dr drive up there, which was five miles away, which was higher up on the, you know, the mountain to get away from this guy. He said, well, I'm going to go with you. So, I mean, I can not and I said, well, I'm just going to go home. He said, well, I go, I said, he said, I'm going to go home, right? He said, I'm going to go home. Uh, he said, he's going to follow me home. I said, well, I live with my sister and she don't like company. She don't like strangers. He said, well, I'll stay in the car. I'll stay in the car. I mean, this guy would not, I guess he, and come find out the guy was mentally ill and they said he had PTSD or something. I don't know. All I know, to me, he act like he's schizophrenic. And what happened is he had quit taking his meds. So the first three days he was there, he was normal as normal could be. The fourth day when he woke up, he was just bat shit crazy. Is the only way to say it. And so he started following me in my Chevy. He, got, he had a brand new Honda Accord. He started following me down the Appalachian Trail. That part of that road, the part of the dirt trail is the Appalachian Trail. He started following me. So I just pulled over to the side of the road and called the, the pole 911. And uh, the North Carolina State Troopers showed up. Because Hot Springs, North Carolina, they only have one police in Hot Springs, North Carolina. So what happened is, the North Carolina State Trooper showed up. I explained to him the situation. I said, I'm trying to, you know, get away from this guy. He was normal. Now he's no longer normal. And he had a nine millimeter. Oh, I forgot to tell you this. Before I got in my car, and before I got my Chevy Astro motor home, he had a nine millimeter. And he was pointing it around like this. And he was talking about, I'm going to go kill my wife. Him and his wife was legally separated. And he said, I'm going to Asheville and I'm going to kill my wife with this pistol. And I was like, oh, my God. I, and, and this guy could have shot me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he, but luckily, I guess luckily, he liked me. Thank God he liked me. Because I didn't have, I mean, he's a pretty good-sized guy. I'd say about 6'1", about 200, 220 pounds. He wasn't fat. He was in shape. It looked like he worked out. But this guy was following me, so that's the only time I had to call the po police on the Appalachian Trail. So <clears throat> always be prepared, I guess, is the moral of the story. It doesn't matter if you're in the gazebo at 1 a.m. at night, downtown Kingsport, or if you're on the Appalachian Trail, or if you're out west hiking the PCT, which is the Pacific Crest Trail that goes from Mexico to Canada, always be prepared. I don't care if you got 22-inch arms like I do. If a guy's got a gun or a knife, your muscles ain't gonna fight off nobody with a knife or, or a knife or a gun, you know what I'm saying? So you always gotta be vigilant, because I mean, you have to take your own uh, life. You have to take your own safety into your own, into your own hands. I'm telling you, because when I have had to, only that one time did the law show up when I needed them in North Carolina. I've called them twice in Kingsport with somebody threatened me. They show up an hour later when I was blogging, minding my own business. So the moral of the story: take care of your own self, because when the the crap hits the fan. You got your back against the wall. You got to count on yourself. And so I do. I never leave home without it. So that's the moral of the story. Always be prepared. So just like me, I was prepared to have a nice, good, hot cup of coffee. So what did I bring? I was prepared. You know, you take steps to be prepared. I don't care if it's <clears throat> like if I was hiking, going backpacking, I would take this little setup right here which is it's done cooled off i think it is this right here i think it only weighs six ounces this stove i'm telling you it, it is good as an 80 dollar rocket pocket backpacking stove this little pro uh, butane cylinder is, is very light too you can easily carry two or three that two or three of these in a backpack this stove right here put it in your backpack if you if you want to heat water up for your ramen noodle soups on the trail for coffee or for oatmeal whatever if you want to cook in this you got this, you can do it. It's lightweight, it's convenient, it's portable, should I say more. It's cheap, $12 at Walmart. You can't beat it with a stick. So I'm prepared. I came prepared because I wanted coffee. Well, same way for your safety. You gotta be prepared 
when it comes to your safety. You've got to be able to uh, neutralize a threat. You have to be able to neutralize a threat if somebody is standing in your face threatening you. You know? And some people are on drugs, you know, and um, they could be on meth, whatever, and be super strong, psycho crazy. I met one guy I know was on meth, and he was just out there. I won't go there. It was downtown Kingsport. But I'm having a good time, and I've been on here, what, almost 40 minutes? You mean I can actually talk that long? That's why sometimes I joke around, and I say, hey, I'm the mouth of the South. I appreciate everybody sitting here watching, Nate, whoever. I know John Keller, all my friends. I love all my viewers, my subscribers. I love everybody who watches my channel. That's what we need in, in life. More friends, more love, more self-respect, more respect for people around you. And you got to be happy, positive, and focused. Well, I ain't got time to uh, sit around and be sad like a frog on a lily pad. I'd rather be happy like a, a hummingbird Zzz, everywhere. Be happy like a butterfly, beautiful and happy. Be like Muhammad Ali. He'd always say, he was always saying, I'm beautiful. Just look at me. I'm beautiful. I'm the, the greatest. You got to have confidence in yourself. If nobody else don't have confidence in yourself, you got to have confidence in yourself. You got to believe in yourself. You got to be strong. It's, it's more important to be strong mentally and spiritually than it is physically. I've been working out. I started back working out this past week. I've already hit the gym three times late at night. Uh, the, uh, I go to the gym at Zalt Gym right beside Kroger in Kingsport. It's open 24-7. They have showers in there. They got any kind of weights you want. And can't, my back is, I started doing stretches and my back's getting better. It felt like it was in the bone and in the muscle in my back, like something was pulled, I don't know, but like it's in the muscle and in the bone. This seems to me since I've been stretching this week, every time I've been going to the gym, I've been doing stretches. My back's been getting better. Been doing a little praying. Praying, I'm sure that helps too, you know. No matter how much we think we are in control of our life, there's things that we cannot control. Like right now, I could be sitting here talking, and somebody could come up with a weapon and off me right here, you know. Life's short, so. But, like I said, take your safety in your own hands. Put your faith in God. So if you ever have to check out instantly, if somebody wants to check you out instantly, you got your faith where it should be, and that's in God. I don't have my faith in no government official. I don't have no, my faith in no city in, uh, official, no county official, no state official, or no federal official. I don't have my faith in nobody in the White House. My faith is right up there. That's what keeps me going, you know, and believing in myself. It don't matter how many mistakes I made today, I don't have to make that same mistake tomorrow, you know? You do, it, no matter what you've done today wrong, you don't have to repeat that same mistake tomorrow. As we get older, you know, I ain't perfect. I still fall and slip and do things I shouldn't do from time to time. But the bottom line is, hey, I can always change any bad behavior or I can always change any pattern in my life. If I'm walking down the wrong path, hey, I can do a U-turn or I can find another avenue that's more, that is more productive, that is more healthy, that is more... Uh, conducive to change, you know. We are responsible for ourselves. That's even the Bible says that we are even responsible for where we're supposed to go in life when we check out. You, you know, if you believe in God, put your faith there. Go to he you go to heaven. You know, if you want to be an atheist and don't believe in God, and and there is a God which I 100 severely believe, then hey. You check out and there's God, you know where you're going. But if you ain't got no faith in God and you don't ever repent of your sins, you know, and you keep falling down and going the wrong way, well, hey, you're responsible for, you are responsible for the beha your behavior. You're responsible for the choices you make in life. It ain't your mama's fault. It ain't your daddy's fault. It ain't your girlfriend, your wife's fault. It ain't the preacher's fault in the church. You are responsible for your own behavior. And no matter what you're doing in life, whether if you're doing drugs or you know, just doing things, stealing, robbing, whatever. You, everybody has the potential to change. You know, don't, I see people go to 
therapy all the time, but they keep doing the same thing over and over. Most of them going to therapy because they're court ordered. But the bottom line is this. No matter what you've done wrong today, tomorrow you do not have to repeat that pattern. You do not have to repeat that behavior. You've got to be in control. I'm, I'm 40% in control. I would say 20% in control. God's in control of my life 80%. Because, I mean, I could fall dead right now, a heart attack. You know what I'm saying? I'm, you know, I'll, I'll be 54 October. Once you hit 50, anything can happen. The unexpected can happen once you get 50. You know what I'm saying? It's like a car. When it gets old and it gets a bunch of miles on it, it could check out any minute, the engine on the car. Same way as your heart. Your heart could start right now and you could drop dead just like that right there. So, I ain't perfect. I'm just a big O. Keeping it real right here on the big O show while I'm consuming therapeutic coffee one sip at a time. Still got a little steam coming off of it. A little bit of steam. I guess I'm going to check out. I've been talking for 41 minutes and 16 seconds. Probably too long. But I like to entertain. Sometimes I get stressed out. I think about quitting YouTube all the time. But every time I think about quitting YouTube, somebody I stay off YouTube two or three days and somebody come over there and say something positive, make me feel like, you know, hey, tell me how much they enjoy watching my videos, how much they enjoy watching my blogs, how much they enjoy my restaurant reviews, my food reviews, my item reviews, or somebody to walk, I can be having a little down and out day. You know, I'm not perfect, but 90% of the time I am happy and positive. But there's some once in the blue moon, I might get in a little slump mentally and spiritually, and I can be at Walmart and somebody walk up to me, hey, big O, how you doing? And South, <clears throat> people watch me on YouTube. I never get to see y'all. I never get to see your, your face, but y'all get to see my face. So people walk up to me in Walmart. I don't have a clue who they are 90% of the time. They're like, oh, I watch your YouTube channel. Of course, I don't ever say, I try to play it off like, you know, maybe I've bumped into them before and talked to them, which 90, I got a good memory. 90% of the time, I would remember it, or 95% of the time. So, and then I, after about five or six seconds, I said, they, they got to know me from YouTube because I don't even know these people. They just walk up to you. So on days like that, hey, there's always something that inspires me, that motivates me. When somebody says, comes up to me and say, tells me how much they enjoy my blogs, how much they enjoy my YouTube videos, you know, whether if I'm doing a review or, my, or if I'm just sitting here showing y'all how I made, I made my coffee with this nice, convenient, cheap stove, and then I continue to run my mouth blogging, well, hey, I enjoy what I do. I probably, I'm not the best blogger on YouTube, I'm sure. You know, I'm not a Casey Neistat from New York who now lives in L.A., but I'm just a big O right here in downtown, love the Kingsport, Tennessee, having fun. I'm happy, positive, and focused, and I'm living. I guess I run my mouth long enough. I appreciate everybody who's watched my channel. I love my viewers. I love my subscribers. I consider everybody who watched my channel my friends. I'd rather have, I'd rather make friends than enemies. I mean, life's too short to have a bunch of drama. So I'm going to check out. I'm going to enjoy my cup of coffee. They, they check these lights off at 124 anyway, which I do have, you know, lights in the car and flashlights. But I'm checking out. Thanks for watching my blog. I hope you're having a wonderful night. It's Friday night, but technically Saturday morning. I hope this has been an inspiring video. I hope it motivates you with some good thoughts. And I hope you're blessed by watching my videos. I'm not perfect. I'm just a big O right here on the Big O Show. Thanks for watching, Spaceman Dudley. Give me a thumbs up in my video. Leave comments. That helps my channel. Love everybody. Thumbs up, comments. Until next time, my friends. Later, Gators. There goes out. God bless you.